Hi, I'm Kevin Rutherford. Welcome to RG's Talent Tips. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to transition from talent reporting to talent analytics. So let's dive right in. Most organizations are already doing some level of talent reporting, but in today's competitive landscape, organizations are increasingly turning to talent analytics to give them the answers they need to make decisions with greater confidence. That's not to say that talent reporting isn't important. It is. So what's the difference between the two? Let's take a deeper look on this slide. So you can see here, I want to make this full screen real quick. And you can see over here on the left that the purpose of talent reporting is really to provide talent information. Conversely, the purpose of talent analytics is to improve business decision making. In this next box you see here, we see that information is really driven by leader requests and data availability. With analytics, analysis and insights are what link explicitly to evolving business challenges. And then finally, in this third box, we see that talent reporting here provides leaders with talent metrics. With analytics on the other side, it is the insights that provide implications for business outcomes that is the big difference. So see the difference? It's a different role that requires different work and has radically different outcomes. In short, talent analytics focuses on people and the impact that they drive. It provides an outside in view of the value that HR delivers to the business. Reports provide data, analytics provide insight. Now let's talk about moving from talent reporting to talent analytics and what actually that requires. So I'm gonna to go to the next slide here for us. And specifically what we see here is that when we look at talent analytics and what it requires, it requires a good understanding of the specific business priorities. We wanna make sure that we're looking at what are the business priorities when we start making that transition. The next thing is, is we're looking for a creation of the right type of custom reports. Next thing we're gonna be looking for is an application of hyper relevant, meaning something that's really specific to this, advanced segments. And that's to the data. We wanna look at advanced segments to the data. And then lastly, the, one of the biggest things probably is that we want that presentation of insights and recommended action using, and this is probably the most important again, the language of business and not HR. In fact, just last week I was shaking my head because a report I had received from one of my clients didn't contain any context to the visuals on the page. I couldn't understand if the performance I was looking at was good or if it was bad. And that's a classic rookie mistake that I see happen all the time. And one that quite frankly makes people hate HR. The graph could be going up, down, all around, and as the recipient, I had the job of trying to figure out if something was good, if it was bad, or if it was even worth ignoring. The frustrating part is that most executives will take a look realize the difficulty in interpreting that data in about 20 seconds or less, and then go right back to their old ways of making decisions entirely based on their gut. And that's even if the report has some hidden gold inside. So just remember, a report can usually be very good at cle uh, clearly highlighting what is going well or badly, but a report usually has a hard time explaining why something is going awry or going really well. Your number one job is to make sure that your reports don't fail at this straightforward responsibility. So now I'm gonna share a few tips that you can use to really up-level your analytics reporting. It will allow you to speak with a clear, influential voice that is reflective of your hard work and hopefully your insights. So let's take a look again here at our next slide. I talked about these five kind of key strategies that we wanna look at, but here what's most important is one of the biggest reporting mistakes that I see is organizations not making clear if the performance is good, bad, or otherwise. It's missing context. So again, context, context is the key. 
Your challenge is that senior leaders will almost always only ask for data. It's your job as the analytical team to understand their needs and wants enough so that you can complement their data with rich, rich context. So I recommend five strategies to provide context in your reports. So we're going to take a peek at those now. The first thing is, is that you need to use what we call preset targets. Have a defined target that you want set out. The second key thing is, is that we want you to use industry benchmarks. Why? Because most organizations compare themselves against each other or others inside of their industry. The other is to use averages, all right? We want to use averages, not necessarily high and low, but what's the average in there? And then the next thing is that we want to use what we call like type time periods, meaning it's like this versus this, Q1 versus Q2 of last year. And then lastly, we want to look at using segments. Segments are probably the most important thing. This is actually segmenting the data out, saying maybe at a senior level, a mid-level, a bottom level. So all of these are roughly in kind of what I would call the priority order, from the most valuable, in essence, the hardest, right, to do, or to the least, to the what I call slightly less valuable, the easiest to do. And sometimes you can choose multiple strategies. You don't have to use just one, you can use multiple. But additional benefit to providing context is that you're actually packaging a little bit of your own brilliance into those report. That's what makes those individuals and business leaders seek you out because you're giving them insights. So let's pull up again our next slide here. Real quickly here, one of the key things that we want to focus on is knowing the difference between what we call metrics and KPIs. I'm sure you've heard of KPIs, simply means key performance indicators. These are things that the business often uses a lot of. So what we need to know is a metric is simply this. It is simply a number, right? It's simply a number. Whereas a KPI is something different. So generally when we look at metrics, they're good for tactical and diagnostic purposes. It really moves the needle on small things. The second thing here is when we say keep a, K, a KPI is a metric that helps you understand how, and this I think is the most important, you are doing against your objectives. And this is the most important. When I say objectives, it's either your strategic business objectives or business objectives within your department or again through the company. Now that's a big difference is one is going against the objectives, the other one is just a straight number. So if your reports are not being admired or you even suspect that no one has looked at them, a big contributing factor is likely the fact that all of it contains metrics. That's the primary bulk of it is metrics because those have lower value insights. So as much as possible, your reports should only contain KPIs, especially as they go up the chain of command because that's what business is focused on, right? Numbers are the language of business. And more importantly, bonuses are often tied to them. So if you want eyeballs on your information, focus on KPIs. Now, the HR team and all the folks who make tactical decisions need to see the metrics. You need to include them. Make sure that the tactical op optimizations are really happening. But even then, make sure you include at least one or two KPIs that provide a direct line of sight to the business's bottom line for all of those metrics. So yes, again, context. So let's look at our final slide here. And here, what we really want to look at is for analysis that's being shared with executives, whether that's via email or presentations or Zoom, a good framework is to use this an acronym here, I-A-B-I. And that stands for simply insights, actions, and business impact. This allows for more meaningful and more impactful storytelling with the data. So next, we want to make sure that we up-level reports with a focus on, not surprisingly, action, right? What is it that we have to do to be, to be moving forward to hit those new numbers? It's about being clear in terms of what you want the recipient, 
of your information to do based on the analysis that they're being sent. This is invaluable because none of those seeing the data after you will, will understand it as much as you do. So with ports, this is hard to do, but when you automate data production, it places huge limits on your ability to include your actions with it. So here's another powerful idea that you might want to use. And that is here is to recommend what we call stopping actions. And simply here, what we want you to do is to say, stop doing these things. So for example, where a target number might fall more than say 30% below the average acceptance rate, rate, have your report automatically populate that list in a separate column called out in detailed recommend stopping. And here's one other one for, for kind of good measure. It's a bonus for you, so to speak. If you really truly want to understand what is happening inside your business and with your internal clients and strategic business outcomes, you need to be able to segment the data. As I always say, you need to slice, you need to dice, and you need to drill. Remember that, slice, dice, and drill, dig deep. And there you have it. Reports are what provide data, analytics are what provide insight. You need to be doing both. And as you transition your organization from talent reporting to talent analytics, here are kind of six things to keep in mind. So number one, remember to work back from business strategy. Number two, make sure that you have a very good understanding of the business priorities and have the right data to start with, right? Garbage in, garbage out, have the right data to start with. Number three, prioritize the most critical business questions. What's most important to the business? What is it they wanna know? Number four, think what talent actions, if taken, could drive or improve business results because that's all the business cares about, driving business results, more money in their pocket. Number five, find the business's unmet needs. Where do they see gaps? Maybe what is it that they, they don't know that you do know that you can provide insights to them? And then lastly, when presenting your insights and your recommended actions, always, always, always use the language of business, not HR. They don't want to hear HR gobbledygook talk the language of business. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something that you can apply right away. If you did and want more, please subscribe to our channel below and check out our website for even more content, handouts, and free tools that will take you from where you are to where you want to be. Until next time.